The presence of antibodies in your bloodstream is never normal and indicates something is wrong with your immune system. Under no circumstance should your body ever create antibodies to its own tissues. When this happens, your immune system will eventually destroy whatever it's trying to attack. If your body attacks your thyroid, as in the case of Hashimoto's thyroiditis or Graves' disease, it will eventually result in its destruction. But what if there were a way to stop this destruction from occurring? If you could do that, then you'd essentially put your disease into remission. While conventional medicine doesn't have very many great options for reducing thyroid antibodies, there are plenty of promising natural therapies that can help. My personal favorite are over-the-counter supplements. Who doesn't love the idea of taking something completely natural that may halt the progression of their disease? Pretty much everyone, but there's a catch. While supplements can be effective, they don't work for everyone, nor will they completely solve the problem if used by themselves. But given the alternative to just take thyroid medication and wait and see, they fill in the gap between this option and what patients and people really want. Supplements that can help lower your thyroid antibodies fall into two major categories. Category number one are supplements that have been shown in clinical studies to reduce thyroid antibodies. These are pretty simple. They are supplements that have been tested in humans, usually in a placebo-controlled environment, where researchers have given these supplements to a group of people over a period of time and have tested their antibodies both before and after the treatment. And the results of these studies have shown, after accounting for as many variables as possible, that certain supplements can indeed lower or reduce thyroid antibodies. And category number two are supplements that may help based on their known physiologic function and on anecdotal evidence. These are supplements that may work based on our understanding of how autoimmune diseases start and progress and how the target nutrient or botanical may positively impact that process. Supplements in this category also have anecdotal evidence, which means that at some point, they have been used successfully by other thyroid patients. But the primary distinction between these two categories is that one has been proven with human studies to work and the other has not. But here's where things can get frustrating. Just because something has been proven to work in a clinical study, even in a placebo-controlled study, doesn't guarantee that it will work for you. I can't tell you how many times that I've given thyroid patients supplements that should work based on everything that I've read and learned, and yet they don't provide the benefit they are supposed to. And the opposite is also true. There are plenty of times that I've given people supplements that have never been proven to work, and lo and behold, they appear to work great. For this reason, I'm giving you information on both categories of supplements so you can experiment and figure out what works best for you. With that in mind, let's jump into the supplements that have been proven to work. And number one on that list is Nigella sativa. Nigella sativa is the plant that produces black seeds, and it has the honor of being one of the few plant-based compounds that has been shown in a placebo-controlled trial to lower thyroid antibodies. This study showed that, compared to placebo, taking two grams of Nigella sativa resulted in a drop of TPO antibodies by about 50% over the course of eight weeks without any additional interventions aside from a stable dose of level thyroxin. Patients who took Nigella sativa over this eight-week time frame also saw improvements in their TSH and T3 levels. This indicates that this plant-based compound has both pro-thyroid and pro-immune benefits. This study used Nigella sativa powder at two grams per day, but you can probably also get similar or better results using either black seeds or black seed oil. As I've stated in previous videos, I think black seed oil is superior to Nigella sativa powder because it's easier to concentrate the dose and you can standardize the active ingredients. Number two is selenium. Selenium is definitely a no-brainer if you have any sort of autoimmune thyroid disease, both because of studies which support its use, as well as our understanding of how it works physiologically. Autoimmune thyroid diseases stem from thyroid gland inflammation and damage, which is often self-induced during the creation of thyroid hormones. Both selenium and glutathione help to protect the thyroid gland from oxidative stress by preventing damage from hydrogen peroxide. When selenium is low, your thyroid gland is more susceptible to damage. And if it ends up getting damaged, the proteins in your thyroid gland can spill into your bloodstream where they can interact with your immune system. Because selenium is necessary for the creation of glutathione, it makes sense that supplementing with it may help protect the thyroid gland and lower thyroid antibodies. 
And this is what we see in some studies. One study, for instance, showed that people taking 200 micrograms of selenium as sodium selenite saw a reduction in their TPO antibodies by around 40% and a reduction in their thyroglobulin antibodies by around 10%. Though this value did not reach statistical significance, which means that the result may have occurred from chance. You should also know that there's some conflicting data regarding whether or not selenium will actually help reduce thyroid antibodies. In my experience, the key to whether or not selenium will be helpful all depends on your selenium status. If your selenium status is already optimized, then taking more of it is probably not gonna help. But if you've been neglecting your selenium intake for years, then there's a good chance you will be a positive responder when taking it. Number three is inositol. Inositols are sugar-like compounds that are naturally found in the body and have a wide range of beneficial effects by acting as secondary messengers inside of your cells. As far as your thyroid is concerned, inositol augments the downstream effects of TSH receptor stimulation via the inositol-dependent pathway. When activated, this pathway regulates the function of thyroglobulin, which is a protein used to create thyroid hormone. Not only does it have a direct effect on thyroid hormone, but also on thyroglobulin levels. And given that thyroglobulin is the target of thyroglobulin antibodies, found commonly in both Hashimoto's and Graves, it makes sense that optimizing the function of this protein may benefit those with these conditions. This hypothesis has been borne out in some studies as well. One study showed that taking the combination of selenium and myo-inositol over the course of six months reduced TSH levels by 27%, TPO antibodies by 13% and thyroglobulin antibodies by about 16%. Patients taking this combination of supplements also saw improvements in both their free T3 and free T4 levels over the same time period. Elevated thyroglobulin antibodies are not as common as elevated thyroid peroxidase antibodies, but if you have them, then using inositol to optimize the function of thyroglobulin should be considered. And number four, we have iodine reduction. I know putting this one here is technically a stretch, because we're not talking about taking a supplement, but instead not taking one. The reason this works is simple. Excess iodine intake has been shown in multiple studies to increase thyroid antibodies in susceptible people. Reducing your iodine intake to a normal level, around 150 to 300 micrograms per day, may actually help to normalize your thyroid antibodies. This recommendation is based off of plenty of population studies where this exact trend has been shown to occur. The benefits of reducing iodine intake on thyroid antibodies will likely only be seen if you are currently or have previously been taking a high dose of iodine, greater than 1,000 micrograms per day over an extended period of time. The connection between thyroid antibodies and iodine intake is more complex than you might think. So if you want to learn more, then make sure to check out my other videos on this topic. On top of these four proven supplements, there are also plenty of others that may be effective as well. Just remember, these do not have the same studies supporting their use, so their benefits may be hit or miss. Number one on this list is vitamin D. If you're going for low-hanging fruit, then vitamin D is the lowest you can go. It's hard to know for sure if taking vitamin D will actually lower your thyroid antibodies, but it's a very safe therapy and does have the potential to help. Physiologically, we know that on top of its role in regulating calcium, vitamin D also helps to stabilize the endocrine system and the immune system. In this way, it acts more like a hormone than a vitamin, which is why some people refer to it as hormone D instead of vitamin D. The problem with vitamin D supplementation is that you'll see mixed results. Some studies show that taking vitamin D in the setting of existing vitamin D deficiency may have a positive impact on thyroid antibodies, while other studies suggest that there's no benefit to the thyroid or the immune system when taking it. This is one of those that may appear to be complex, but it really isn't. Every single thyroid patient should have their vitamin D level checked, regardless of what type of thyroid condition they have, and it should be addressed if it's found to be low. This is because even if it doesn't provide direct benefits to your thyroid, which is debatable by the way, because it still might, it still provides general benefits to your overall health, including your mood, calcium levels, autoimmune disease risk, and more. And if you want it to have even more benefits, then consider combining it with number two, fish oil. The combination of fish oil and vitamin D when taken together has been shown in a large scale study of over 25,000 people to reduce the risk of all autoimmune diseases by up to 22%. This indicates that both of these compounds play some role in regulating the immune system, and that taking both is better than taking one or the other. There's no shortage of studies showing that fish oil has anti-inflammatory effects, and these benefits are most likely mediated through its content of EPA and DHA. 
These long chain fatty acids help balance out arachidonic acid, an omega-6 fatty acid, which is elevated with the consumption of meat, poultry, and seed oils. A relative imbalance in arachidonic acid and omega-3 fatty acids promotes inflammation and very likely makes autoimmune diseases worse. And because thyroid autoimmune diseases are at heart inflammatory diseases, it makes sense that taking something that is anti-inflammatory in nature would probably have some benefit on the underlying disease. While no studies prove that taking fish oil will reduce or lower thyroid antibodies, it seems plausible that they are at least beneficial given our understanding of how they work in the body. Given their known documented benefits, the fact that few people get enough fish oil as is, and their potential to help your thyroid, you can't go wrong in taking them. This leads us to number three, which is magnesium. Magnesium is involved as a cofactor for over 300 different enzymes, making it critical for a number of cellular functions. One or more of these likely impact thyroid function and the immune system because we know that as magnesium levels drop, the risk of Hashimoto's, hypothyroidism, and elevated thyroid antibodies increases. We also know that data from NHANES suggests that 20 to 25% of Americans do not consume enough magnesium. So at first glance, this seems like a slam dunk. Unfortunately, while magnesium does provide plenty of benefits to thyroid patients, it doesn't appear that taking it will lower thyroid antibodies. It's still a great idea to take magnesium if you are a thyroid patient, given its benefits and the fact that so many of you are probably deficient, but don't count on it to fix your immune system. So is it worth taking supplements if you have Hashimoto's thyroiditis or Graves' disease? I think so, and I think the evidence supports that statement. And my experience suggests that the majority of thyroid patients who take supplements do see benefit. If you are someone who is looking to reduce your thyroid antibodies, then I'd also recommend looking at your diet, which means you'll want to check out this video next.